conference full of initial excitement and ultimately floppy disappointments. <laughs> First, there was an overheard at Barnard, which was originally meant as some sort of safe space for Barnard students and 50 common threads about Marxism. <laughs> the group was discovered by Columbia students when a Barnard student posted a picture of herself in bed with half of Ray Schwimmer. <laughs> Picture. <laughs> Yet the peak. <laughs> <laughs> Yet the peak of overheard at Barnard was also a preview of its fall from grace, as arguments about consent and trigger warnings divided the, the group faster than an organized survey. <laughs> administration tried to improve student life by giving its students access to JJ's place. Unfortunately, this is a still a crisis in the making. What incentive do Barnard students have to talk to Columbia boys now that they don't need swipe access? <laughs> if Columbia boys can't bribe their dates with a charred hockey puck between two buns, <laughs> they'll have no way to compete with Sway Lee on Tinder. <laughs> considering going to Barnard. The Barnard class of 2020 was already fighting for the right to hold Malia's hair back the first time she had to puke into a soul toilet. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, Malia chose to take a gap year and go to Harvard, which made Donald Trump immediately skeptical and demand to see a long-form acceptance letter. <laughs> Maybe all of this JJ's drama is what turned Malia away from Barnard, New York's premier school for corporate white commencement speakers. <laughs> JJ's place probably seemed pretty and unattractive to Michelle Obama, considering her war on fat kids. <laughs> when Barnard announced that JJ's would be available to all students, Michelle must have used the executive veto and told Malia, you, you have to go to school in Boston where there's healthy food like Boston Market and Boston cream pie and you know what, maybe just, just don't go to school for a year. <laughs> Regardless, Malia Obama chose not to come to Barnard, probably because Obamacare, but Barnard no care. <laughs> Construction is displacing professors, annoying the shit out of the neighborhood residents, and leaving some students without their cultural center. It's like a mini Manhattanville in our own backyard. <laughs> and as Barnard's foundation was pounded by jackhammers, its students were getting a pounding of their own from a thick 6% tuition increase. <laughs> Going to Barnard now costs 66000 per year, officially pushing this part tuition above the price of a back row Hamilton ticket. <laughs> and the rising tuition apparently wasn't enough for Barnard's muddy guzzling administration, which just launched a revolutionary new campaign to raise more money. <laughs> the Bold Sanders sorority recruitment video. <laughs> keeping around instead of just slowly withering away like Maggie the Magnolia. <laughs> Ultimately, this just proves that the more, the more money Barnard takes, the more fucked up it becomes. Just like a high-profile pro hooker. Or Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Music ever, then plays, we're all in this together. Woo!